Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. The Super Bowl is now set between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers. A rematch of the Super Bowl back in 2020 before all hell broke loose in the world. Take from that what you will. But watching these four teams play on Sunday sparked a lot of important lessons for the Patriots to learn as they head into the 2024 offseason and try to jumpstart a rebuild, particularly on the offensive side of the football. And I don't think it's impossible that they can get back to the promised land if they do these things and they can get there quickly. But a lot of lessons learned from watching those four teams play on Sunday. So let's start with the first lesson. The first lesson, which is good news for the New England Patriots, is that defense still very much matters. We saw this in Baltimore. Kansas City Chiefs defense essentially won that game. I know everyone's all excited to talk about Patrick Mahomes and his the fact that he ran through Josh Allen and he ran through Lamar Jackson and Tua and now he's going to face the Niners. And frankly, I'm picking I'm picking the Chiefs to win it all this year just because I do not reject greatness. Mahomes is the new Brady. I don't think he's better than Brady, but the defense for Kansas City ultimately won them that game. They stopped Lamar Jackson. They figured out how to mitigate their ground attack. And that's really what matters in, in when push comes to shove in the NFL postseason. Yes, you need to score on offense, obviously, but you need to make defensive stops. And even though we had a bit of a shootout in San Francisco between the Detroit Lions and the San Francisco 49ers, it was a tale of two halves which were really sparked by the defense on both sides. The Detroit Lions did a fantastic job in the first half, mitigating San Francisco 49ers, who couldn't really do much. And then the second half, the reason why the Niners were able to climb back into that game is because the Niners' defense did their job against Detroit. Um, I'm not a big fan of the prevent defense. The Patriots would do that quite a bit the last few seasons when they built up a lead, and then you'd see the other team come back. And... I think that was an important lesson that we saw in San Francisco. The one time the Detroit Lions marched down the field was in the final minutes because the Niners were playing a prevent defense and because the Lions were playing a soft defense in the second half, the Niners were able to climb back into that game. Luckily, Patriots are likely going to have an elite top five defense once again next season. Yeah, there's some pieces you have to look into. Maybe you bring back Kyle Duggar. Maybe you bring back Josh Uche. But for the most part, they're going to have all those pieces back. And they're going to be elite once again. And if the offense is more than competent, suddenly you have a playoff team again. But Patriots really have to start rebuilding on the offensive end, which leads me to lesson two, which is you need dynamic playmakers. All right, we saw that amazing catch Brandon Ayuk made that was deflected got the Niners back into the game. They have Debo Samuel. We know all the options they can do with him. Christian McCaffrey, kind of a Swiss Army knife out there. They had their fullback. Uh, uh, what is, how do you pronounce his name? Yushik, I, th- I think. Pro Bowl fullback. The Patriots really should consider bringing back the fullback. I think it's very important. That was always their bread and butter when Tom Brady was there. Even if you do plan to modernize the offense a little bit more, San Francisco certainly has a modern offense, and they utilize the fullback. You need those playmakers who can make catches downfield, who can power run, who can do wide zone runs, bootlegs, all that stuff. You need those playmakers out there, and we certainly saw that with uh, Baltimore. They had their playmakers with, uh, uh, what's his name, Uh, uh, Zay Flowers. He, He made a lot of mistakes on Sunday, but really was their number one primary playmaker. They have Odell, who's not the same guy. And we know Kansas City, what they were able to do with Travis Kelsey out there and with Patrick Mahomes, you need those guys that are going to be dynamic, that are going to move the offense and give your offense lots of options to score in many different ways. But I think the third lesson is important here, and that is that mobile quarterbacks aren't necessarily the way to go. I think mobility is very important. It's as important as it's ever been in the NFL But we have to look at the facts. Quarterbacks like Lamar Jackson have never won a Super Bowl. Lamar Jackson hasn't even made it to the Super Bowl. You look at Michael Vick. He never made it to a Super Bowl. So, yeah, I I think mobility is important. But what really matters is you have to have that offensive line in front of you. You have to have a quarterback who's going to stand in the pocket, go through the progression, 
make the correct f- throws, have good footwork. I mean, Tom Brady was not mobile, but he had good footwork. He could move around in the pocket and extend plays that way. That is the most important thing. And then, if need be, you bail on the play and you run for an additional 10 to 15 yards. And I think we saw that with Brock Purdy, who had just as good of a game on the ground on Sunday as Lamar Jackson did. And part of the reason he did is because people took him seriously as a pocket passer. And when his options weren't open downfield, well, he had the middle of the field to run. And Purdy certainly took advantage of that. And Purdy is not the most athletic individual. Yeah, he can he can shift on the run a little bit and, and extend plays that way. And he certainly did that on Sunday. It was quite surprising, actually. But the most important thing is you need someone that can stand in that pocket, make the correct reads, go through the progression, and make the right throw. Now, I'm not necessarily saying if the Patriots draft draft Jaden Daniels that he can't do that. He has the tools. He has the arm strength. He has the accuracy. He can step into throws. He needs to do a little bit of a better job at going through the progression, I think, and that's going to be his biggest learning curve going through the NFL. But if you're drafting a guy like Jaden Daniels, you have to recognize that He's going to need to be a pocket passer first and then take advantage of his mobility later if necessary. Same thing goes for Drake May. You know, we see these teams that draw up QB runs, pass run options to their quarterbacks. Well, Lamar Jackson's not in the Super Bowl. Josh Allen is not in the Super Bowl. Drake May and Jaden Daniels can do both of those things, and certainly that, that should be part of their offensive package going forward if they draft one of those two guys. But... The important thing is they stand in the pocket and they make those throws. And this is part of the reason I really hope Mac Jones stays on the team. I really, If Mac Jones is the starter next season, I don't think that's a good thing. But he is a cheap, competent quarterback who in training camp, when he's not getting hit, whoever the quarterback is that they're trying to groom to be the eventual starter, whether that's Drake May, Jaden Daniels, or someone else, they're going to be able to learn from Mac Jones, who actually is pretty good at that, standing in the pocket, going through the progression, and making the right reads. Now, he's going to have a noodle arm and and do all the things Mac Jones does, and when the going gets tough, that's when he really gets impacted, and that's why he probably won't be the starter of the future for the Patriots. But I hope they keep him because he can teach whomever that next quarterback is a lot of important lessons about standing in the pocket. And that's how Lamar Jackson also became an MVP caliber quarterback, is not necessarily because of his legs. We knew what he could do with his legs, but it's because he learned to stand in the pocket and go through the progression, and he abandoned that a little bit on Sunday, and then eventually... When they needed to make big chunk plays and come back to win the game, he started forcing throws, and they ultimately lost the game because Lamar threw it into triple coverage there, which he really should not have. So that's a really important lesson. We have not seen a run-first type quarterback win a Super Bowl in the NFL quite yet. Mobility is important, but the most important thing is standing in there, making the correct reads, and making the correct throws. Lesson number four, the offense does need to be modernized. Detroit's modernized. Um, I know they take advantage of the power run, but they run a lot of wide zone. They do a lot of really interesting things. Uh, Certainly San Francisco, that Kyle Shanahan offense, we see it run in Los Angeles with McVay. They are kind of the pinnacle of what offenses should be in 2024. We know all the different things Patrick Mahomes and Kansas City can do, and we know all the different things Baltimore is able to do with Lamar Jackson and those run-heavy playmakers that they have out there. You need to be able to modernize, run the wide zone. And I think the Patriots have been creeping in that direction a little bit better. Uh, Matt Patricia tried to implement a more simplified modern offense, and it didn't really work out too well. But we saw this past year, even though the offense was worse, they were actually very good at those wide zone plays um, running the football. That was when Ramondre Stevenson and Zeke were playing their best, were when they were running those type of plays. So, look, I I think whether it's Josh McDaniels or Nick Cayley or whomever's running the offense, you're going to need a little bit more options there on offense and perhaps simplify it a little bit for some of the young playmakers that hopefully you'll be bringing in this offseason. And finally, the fifth and final lesson is you need a great QB to win Super Bowls. Patrick Mahomes is probably going to win the Super Bowl this year. I know, I I think I just saw the San Francisco 49ers are two-and-a-half-point favorites. Doesn't matter. You, we saw Tom Brady marched into Arrowhead a few years ago and beat the Chiefs, made it to the Super Bowl, won it eventually on a team that really honestly had no business being there, and that's because they had a great 
quarterback, the GOAT, Tom Brady, and now you probably have who will someone who will probably be the number two quarterback of all time, could be number one if he continues to win Super Bowls, in Patrick Mahomes. You need that guy of the future. Maybe that's Drake May, maybe that's Jaden Daniels, who knows, but it's very important that you have a top five NFL quarterback if you want to win Super Bowls in this league. That's going to be the real quest. That's what really matters in the NFL is having that great quarterback. That's what's mattered most importantly for the last 30 years. Hopefully they get that guy this offseason. But if Drake May and Jane Daniels are good, but they're not quite that, you still got to be looking into future quarterbacks. Maybe you really like Caleb Williams and you trade a couple first round picks of the future or a second next year's first and you move up and get him because you think he's that guy. A lot of people compare him to Mahomes. That should be a consideration for the Patriots if they believe Caleb Williams can be that guy and if the Chicago Bears are willing to trade that pick. You need that great guy. Hopefully they get him this this offseason, but we know that's one of the hardest things you can do in the NFL. And they could come at any time, too. Tom Brady was drafted in the sixth round, remember. So it could be someone we're not even thinking about at this point. Um, some other Patriots news. Uh, a few days ago, Demarcus Covington was named the defensive coordinator. This is not really much of a surprise. I think it, he was kind of the obvious choice. Been saying it all along. Um, you know, I would like to see some of these other guys they interviewed for the defensive coordinators, the Ted Lukaboos of the world. Perhaps they will get a job on the defense, and that's part of the reason they brought them in for the interviews is just to see if they can contribute on that end of the football. But Demarcus Covington, with what he's done with Christian Barmore, with what he's done with that defensive line, and what people have said about him when he was coaching, I think it was the Senior Bowl last year, I could be wrong, or it might have been the Shrine Bowl, it was one of those games. He was coaching the entire defense and really impressed a lot of people. I think he's going to fit in that role like a glove, and certainly he's going to have Gerard Mayo there to help him along the way, who's been spearheading that defense for the last five seasons, and Patriots have arguably, in the, the the cumulative of those five seasons, they've arguably arguably been the best defense in the NFL in that time. I think Demarcus Covington is going to be a great fit there. The only drawback there, however, is I think Covington does have head coaching aspirations, so it's possible you can't keep him very long. Now, what happens with Steve Belichick? We'll see what happens. It doesn't look like uh, Bill Belichick is going to get a job, so he probably won't be following him anywhere. Hopefully, I would like to see Steve Belichick elevated to an assistant head coach type role and continue to lead that defense and maybe have some input on the offensive side of the football as well. You keep the Belichick blood there in New England. And look, I don't think Steve is going to be a head coach just because he is not uh, much of an extrovert. He's not the greatest communicator, but people really do like working with him, and he certainly can help when it comes to the X's and O's. I hope he stays in New England and gets an elevated position and helps on that defense and even on the offensive side. Now, the offensive coordinator, uh, some people are saying that Nick Cayley, former tight ends coach for the Patriot, tight ends coach for the Rams this past season, is the favorite to land the offensive coordinator job. I don't think there is a ton of demand for Nick Cayley around the rest of the league as an offensive coordinator. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, but as of right now, he is the favorite. However, Patriots have added two candidates to their offensive coordinator search. Uh, one is Scott Turner, the Raiders passing game coordinator. I'm not too excited about that looking at the Raiders offense, but maybe he has something that he can bring to the table. But what does excite me is the other candidate that they will probably be interviewing, and that is Clint Kubiak, who is the passing game coordinator for San Francisco. I'm talking about modernizing that offense. You bring in a guy like Clint Kubiak, he's going to do that on day one. He's also the son of Gary Kubiak, who, as you remember, has, has had many head coaching jobs in this league and won Super Bowl 50 with the Denver Broncos a few years ago. Um, certainly going to be able to modernize that offense in a lot of ways. Uh, we'll be here at Pat's Cast to cover the offensive coordinator search the rest of the way. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and like this video. And wherever you listen to your podcasts, subscribe there as well.